Hi there, and welcome to a special episode of Kickstarters HQ. Today we're actually talking about why projects don't get accepted by Kickstarter. This is separate from why they don't manage to make funding, but uh, sometimes we have people who try and put their project in, but Kickstarter just doesn't like it. Today we actually have uh, one person who contacted us asking us for help with their project, the inflatable projection screen for gaming and watching movies, uh, just asking us to take a look at why their project keeps getting knocked back by Kickstarter. Now today we've got Terry Hancock joining us. Terry? Hello. Welcome. Terry has had four different projects on Kickstarter, um, so he's a good person to talk to about this. He's had some of them have reached some funding, some haven't. Um, one of the ones that did reach funding was the Libre project, uh, which is an open source alternative uh, specification to things like Blu-ray, which lets people watch high-definition video on open format. So, let's get started and take a look at the videos for the draft of the inflatable projection screen for gaming and watching movies. Okay, so let's let's get started. Terry, what do you think is probably the main issue or some of the main issues that you're seeing here that you think might cause Kickstarter to say no to launching this project? Okay, well, um, although I think it's a it's an interesting project and it's um, um, I think it does look like a cool thing. Um, I do have some questions as to whether or not it's going to meet the, uh, the criteria that Kickstarter has for being either very creative, like movie or art project, or being uh, innovative, like a, a new piece of technology that's you know, new in some fundamental way. Um, and I'm, I'm not sure that it's you know quite innovative enough to uh, to pass that. Um, there are. Um, some questions about you know whether whether it's um, um, <laughs> there's some questions about whether or not it's um, just different enough from what else already out there on the market. Um, another thing that occurs to me when I look at it is that actually Kickstarter is usually interested in startups, um, and this is a little bit more like. What they call mezzanine funding, where you have somebody who already has a business and they're trying to expand into a new line. Yeah, I, I will. I will actually jump in there though and actually say that uh, Kickstarter is specifically against actually starting a business. Uh, I've actually got their. T they have their two rules on launching projects, and I've got their rule one here is specifically. Um, that a project has to have a clear goal, something will be produced by it, and I quote, a project is not open-ended. Starting a business, for example, does not qualify as a project. Right. End quote. Yeah, okay, I can see that. Um, um, but I, I, think, I think there's a different distinction there, though, which is that they're talking mm -hmm. about um, you know, starting up a business which is going to go on indefinitely, it's not what really what they're mm. interested in. However, a startup will frequently try to achieve some specific goal in order to get itself established, and then and then move on. And I, and I think that is something they're interested in. Where where I think sure. the issue might come in here is that if you already have an existing business that already has sales and so on, uh, it raises certain questions like, well, why are you crowdfunding? Why are you not using your retained mm. earning or getting conventional venture capital or getting a bank loan, you know, um, because mm -hmm. maybe they're not seeing that as necessarily their niche, I guess. Um, and so I, I, would, I would think that may be an issue, that it, it may, 
not even be that it's a bad thing to do, but that maybe it's not something that uh, you really need Kickstarter for, I guess. And maybe mm -hmm. they see it that way. Yeah, well, I know he has he has mentioned um, that one of his competitors are going out of business and he wants the money to buy out a competitor to sort of expand to a whole new level. I know from reading through Kickstarter's guidelines, they don't have anything specifically on that, but they do mention that it's basically not for trying to ship pre-existing stock or something that you already have, um, which I'm presuming if he wants to buy out his competitor that that would then be to expand the sales of the product he already has that exists. I see. Um, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, I do I do see one thing that I kind of got from watching, um, actually I may have seen it from his earlier video where he was talking about the facility and, the, and so on, and that's that it sounds as if he's he's going to put the money into getting equipment that he would need for the you know to produce these things, a so production line type of equipment. And of course, one way to do that is to buy out uh, a, a small company that already has all of that, um, and that's that's kind of valid. But if you're if you're doing it that way, I think from a Kickstarter perspective, you really kind of need to focus on what specifically you're getting out of that that's going to allow you to achieve the goals that you're promising your backers, and so maybe if you were going to try to present that, you really would need to present it in terms of, well, I need this material, and this is why I need it in order to produce this product. Um, mm. Yeah, and if, it, and if it's focusing on the, you know, the open the growth of his business or whatever, then yeah, that's going to get outside their guidelines. And um, yeah, I'm really not sure how they feel about buying out other people's businesses. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, in general. Sure, and, and I guess it's worth putting in sort of an example of the reverse of that, like, you know, everyone's seen all the time there are projects launching on Kickstarter for, for some cool new gadget, like, uh, you know, we'll take the Ouya's, the biggest example, you know, sure, there's probably going to be a whole new business launched around the Ouya, but it's not the business that they're actually pitching in the project. Right. The, the project that they're pitching is we're going to make this cool new game system uh, that the world has never seen and you know it's just a happy side effect of that that it's going to grow an entire business and you know I think the same could be said for pretty much any of those kind of uh, technology design gadget based kind of projects. Right. Now one thing he is doing right uh, which I should mention mm -hmm. is that is that He's got a prototype, obviously. I mean, he's got these screens that are mm. there on the screen, and that, that is an important thing. I mean, that's a ground rule that Kickstarter has specifically. You've got to have a prototype for hardware. Uh, it's not, it's not mm. for the creative things like film, but for technology, they've, they've made that a strict rule. So um, in that sense, he's in the right space because he definitely has that. He's got something that provably works that he can make. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's... That's definitely in his favor on Kickstarter. Uh, Absolutely, and, and I, I will add, I think he's done a good job of making... He explains why it's fun, you know. I like... There's a fun tone to a lot of the video. I like that he's doing it lounging, you know, in the pool <laughs> with his kids, and, you know, that it gives it a nice kind of personal laid-back tone that you don't necessarily get with a lot of the, you know, very high funded, uh, when I say funded, I mean the produ producing the actual Kickstarter right. video was highly funded uh, videos. So, I mean, yeah, he's, he's, done, he's done some things good yeah. with the video.